this is my Dell U20 410F. And as you know, it has been giving me one heck of a time lately on the 15 kilohertz signal. Sorry, I'm leaning on the floor. It might sound like I'm walking through the woods when I stand up because of my knees. Um, but Mr. Michael reached out to me and asked me if I could fix or take a look at his TF1260 to get the CPU in and check it out and send it back. And for doing that, he had a Dell U2410F that he had on a shelf and he wasn't going to use and he says, I can send it to you. And I'm like, are you sure? That's way too much. And he did. And it's here. But unfortunately, I have such a clean work area, I have to clean this off and unhook everything and put the new one in. The replacement one in. They're not new. They're, they're older. But uh, we're going to do that right now. So oh, the old. All right. There we go. I'm going to sit down because my back hurts. Whew. Now, to test this out, I'm going to rejunk this up. That is all clean. And we're going to first turn on power to it. There we go. It's a little dim. Let's brighten it up a little bit. We'll let this warm up for a minute and get its bearings. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at my 1200 and get Mr. Michael's TF1260 set up. So let me organize, throw all this on the floor, and I'll be right back. I really enjoy hearing my daughter giggle and laugh. Okay, that's, that's not bad. This is my Amiga 1200. It is a 1B, I think, earlier model. And it has the Pi Storm in it. And I haven't done anything with it since I did that video. So let's see if it still works. Let's see if this monitor will do the old 15 kilohertz. AGA Scan Plus, that's what's in here. And I'm going to turn this on. This will be 31 kilohertz. Low, high. Have to wait. Well, Pi Storm said F it. Let's reboot it. Okay, so let's see what's going on. What's going on? So it's got some lights here. 1.2 volt, 3.3 volt, IPI, and then FPGA kicks on. And it does nothing. So my Pi has said, F it. Was that a red screen? That it is, Edward. Yeah, so my Pi Storm just said, forget about it. Okay, well, we'll take this out. Remember, I removed my FPU because I was using a Pi Storm. TF1230, I'm going to put it back in, but I'm going to be testing the TF1260. This thing can kiss my butt. <laughs> That's right. Turning this on, it'll be on 68EC020 with 2 megs of RAM, which is what it's been doing. On a plus note, I can now test the 15 kilohertz. Now it's not working at all. Low. High. I have a floppy disk. Did my did the whole thing just say, no thank you, sir? Oh! I would love to get one of those A1200.net cases with the metal sunken screw heads. Oh, my compact flash card is gone. So, yeah, we're doing nothing. That's, that's great. So, here's my TF1230, hence the writing of TF1230. Now it's booting. Good Christmas. Damn. Let's look at Mr. Michael's toy. This says, got a nice letter. Hi, Michael. Uh, Chris, thank you again for helping me with this TF1260 and the 060 install test. And my hard drive is validating. Uh, I'm sending in two boxes. One will have the Dell monitor. Box two will have the stand, and the other box within will contain the TF card and the chip. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email or call Mr. Mike and your phone number. Thank you. So this is an AmigaStore.eu Terrible Fire TF1260 with a nice box. Mr. Hertel kind of threw these together. Well, I don't know about this one, but you know, SJ, the design, and all that stuff. They've all been working on these things. They've done a great job. This is the AmigaStore.eu. 
This has the 60 RC 50 and it's in a little 3D printed neat looking case thing. That's really cool. Keeps it from sliding around and I don't know what is going on with my freaking Amiga. Whenever I need it to show something, it's going to not work. A pin header here that says enable 060. Guess we got a jumper that. And let me get sort of EU with a gold metal sticker that is crossed of one across four pins. And we have the little, what is that, a voltage regulator thing right here? I don't know. So I want you to look real closely at this sticker. This is a metal sticker. And what do you see wrong with it? Where are you going? Right there. See how it's touching those pins and it's folded across them? Come on, focus, damn camera. Yeah, it's touching three pins. Anyway, oh, there's my Amiga. Finally popped up. Good. I'm not dead. All right, 64 megs of RAM, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to set myself back to ugly mode. Okay, I need it on ugly mode for now. Do I get 15 kilohertz when I plug it in to the adapter? The ultimate test of the Dell U2410F. Here we go. Here we go. There we go. I get a 15 kilohertz sync again. Holy crap. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's not brightest. This is not the brightest display. She's got some miles on her, but that's, you know what? It's working. I don't care. It's great, and I greatly appreciate it. Okay, so this looks like dookie. So I'm going to go back to a better resolution for me. Let me cut Amadoc here. Let's find screen mode again. And let's plug this sucker back in double. NTSC, high res, no flicker? I think that was it. Let me plug this in first. Let me click test. Ah. Plug it in here. Hurry up. AJ Scan Plus. Yes, I can see that. Okay. So double NTSC, high res, no flicker. Because why? This is an NTSC machine. And it looks a hell of a lot better. Nice and rock solid, crystal clear. I'm only in 16 color because. That's what Jesus used. Okay, so I'm turning this off. Pull my card out. The jumper on mine says enable 030. The jumper on this card says, where is it? Enable 060. But as you can see, number one, it's bent. Number two, it doesn't have a jumper. There we go. Enable 060 with a jumper on it. Nice and yellow so you can see it. The, the pizza in question is this 060. This has been pried on several times and it's got a lot of scratches on the socket. And I'm going to put the helmet of Goober on. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to look for pins that are out of alignment or missing. And it is perfect. Now, if you're going to be taking your chips in and out, the shovel looks like this. You can get them on eBay. This says Gainberry. Uh, it was from the old PPC and Pentium or 46 days. It fits underneath of these pins and you kind of just lift it out and it kind of boop, beep, boop, pops out. So, you got to find your pin 1, which is the missing guy over here. And that's not pin 1, but that's the one that goes in the missing socket over here. You stick this in here like this and you'll notice that it's not fitting very well because it's slightly boogered. The pins are just so slightly boogered. So you got to work it. Mm. Oh my god. Christmas. Eee! Holy crap! Did you hear all that? Gosh, that's okay. That took my old, every bit of of what's left of the power of Grayskull. Woo! Now let's see if I blow it up. <laughs> they sometimes fit great, and other times they get stuck on the lip. So if you're gonna have problems, you're gonna have problems right here on this lip. You can take an emery board or a fingernail file, which is like this thing, and you can put a little bit of chamfering on that edge if you needed to. It'll just fit, like, it'll bump right here on this plastic thing. Some people have just cut their plastic piece off on an angle and don't deal with it anymore. And I've thought 475,000 times about doing that myself. So, does this work at all? Are there lights on it? I don't know. Let's give it the wiggle because it hadn't been used before. Let's pull this down 
Let's turn this on. Low, high. That's a good sign. Hard drive is hard driving. Your TF-1260 is functional, Mr. Michael. That's a good thing. It's booting. I guess I should have plugged in my keyboard. We'll just stick this here. We're going to turn on the Davoom for sound. And we'll see what we get when it boots. It takes my Amiga a minute or so to boot because it's not perfect. Let me turn off an overhead. I need to put those libraries on there. So let me get that MMU libs. So here's the new Dell. Thank you so much for that. It looks crooked, but it's not. That's the angle for speed. Um, we're first going to see what it says. Maybe I do have the libraries. CPU. Yeah. Nice CPU too, guy. 68060. Rev 5. Super scalar, no load. Uh, has an MMU. Has an FPU. It's a full 060 Rev 5. 68060 RC50. Clicking that bad boy in took all my arthritic effort. I thought it wasn't down all the way, and I gave it one more hi -ya, and it went snap. You heard it. I was like, holy crap. I thought it was my bones breaking. So we needed a jumper. Snap a CPU pin. What? <laughs> snap a CPU in, and we're golden. Now, I'm going to turn this on one more time. Let's go some benchmarks, because everybody likes benchmarks. Older Sysinfo, 4.0, doesn't matter. 6860, 6860, 6860, FPU, MMU, whoops, in use. This is a nice processor. Hit the speed. This is Kickstart 3.2 and Amiga OS 3.2.1, I believe. And good golly, Miss Molly, 4 megahertz. Uh, Wow, 69 times faster than your 600, we're 36,560 dry stone per second, 38.16 million instructions per second, and 27.37 million floating operations per second. Nice. Boards, this one shows. Memory, 128 megs of 32-bit CPU RAM, 2 megs of chip. You know, that means if you have a TF-1230 or 1260, you are not... Um, effed by the PCMCIA bug, and you can simply put your card in, and it will show 6 speed, 6x, that's what the Pi Store needs to get, and you'll get your PCMCIA access normally right here. You're not limited to the 4 gig RAM weird stuff. Uh, we'll run sys speed for a quick check on the megahertz -in. 50 megahertz, so yeah, it's normal. And this says terrible fire. I wonder something, real quick. I'm gonna reboot, double mouse button. Does the TF-1260 show up in the boards diagnostic? The TF-1230 doesn't. And I really, really wish it would. Why can't you make the TF-1230 show up? That's a, uh, that's funny. That's the bootloader. Now my Pi Storm is being held in a GPIO covers on no wafers in between and then we'll check it out in a minute. Tools, I think you can just type TF tools, list. Uh, so we're gonna do CPU speed, CPU speed, 50 megahertz. Whoops. There we go, 100 megahertz. Now let's rerun that, uh, that test. And no, it doesn't do 100. Okay, so it doesn't like 100, you're gonna have to mess around. 66 will probably be a good one. Or just leave it at 50. Now I wouldn't run this at 100 because they do run warm. And uh, with no cooling on the 1200, CPU heatsink, a fan, something would help it better. I'm not gonna mess with this, but you can do it by CPU speed, then type speed. You can go like 60. Well, 60, six, 62.5. You just have to play with it. Booting again, luckily it's hard locked at 50, and you do that command and you can make it run faster. Ugh, I have an 06, an 06? I have a Rev 6 in my 4000 that's rocking at 100 on a BFG, but that's hard clocked. The terrible fire tools, maybe there's a newer version out. Remember, I bought mine a long time ago, and it's a TF. It's number two, number two. So, it's pretty OG. 
And a lot's happened since then. I'm sure it needs firmware and all sorts of stuff, but it has a Xilinx chip. And that program, that programmer software hates me. I have a Xilinx programmer. It just, it hates me. I really could use a wobble pop right about now. Mr. Michael, this is for you. Well, it's for me, but cheers. Why don't you use your Mega 1200 more? It takes a while to boot. What's up with this Pi Storm thing, man? I feel like a user. It worked the last time I used it. 50 megahertz clock phase 2. I don't know enough about these tools to be an expert or even comment on them. I just screw around with stuff and it works great. Summarizing, we have a 68060 882 MMU Rev5 full blown MOFO uh, 68060 for this terrible fire TF1260. It does have the EHIDE that device, so if you want to use that, you're going to need a custom ROM for your 1200 using the Remus tools off of Aminet, and you can put all your goodies in there, like the EHIDE that device, so you can use this natively. And that's at least the 1230 does that. Maybe the 1260 is built in? I don't know. And you'll see that I folded that sticker out of the way. Yeah, it's still close, but it's on the paper side now. And all four of those lines are not touching across those pins. I don't know why it was tucked up in the metal part. You know, it is a metal sticker, but uh, that's not good. So we got that sorted. Got the jumper on for the Enable 060 here. And 128 megs of RAM on this, and it's a really nice looking card. And it functions perfectly with this Revision 5 full-blown 060. So that's been the quick testing and assembly of the TF-1260 by Mr. Stephen Leary. And thank you for making this. Dude, you're awesome. And Mr. Hertel assembles these too. So thank you, Mr. Hertel, for being as awesome as you are also. And having all the 060 chips apparently in the world. And I want to thank two special people in my life right now. A, Michael, thank you for hooking me up with this extra Dell 2410F that you happen to have living on a shelf. Greatly appreciate it. And I also want to thank Mr. Stephen R. Because you made a very kind donation to my PayPal account. And you are going to help me out with one of these also. And I greatly appreciate that. In turn, I bought two um, Paula chips for upcoming repairs on some boards that have dead ones. One of them being mine, the Black Beast, and the other one, the one you saw, that was maybe, probably not, because I may have not even got the video out on it because I've had the board forever. Anyway, that funds were recouped back into helping others. So thank you both very much. That's all I got for now. Thank you for watching, and as always, hope you learned something. How do you know from funny, you bastard?